And if you're drawing, if you're running the same lines, of course, connective tissue cannot adapt indefinitely. So you end up getting to a, a, a point where the tissue yields. Okay. That's a long way to get at my point. But the point being is that like, you, like I, I've always said that it's not the exercise you're doing, it's the effort you're putting in that gets you the endocrine response that we want. And, and I think that's, that, so would you say I'm correct in that? I mean, you, you hit on two points. Num number okay. one is something we've previously just discussed in, in terms of reductionism. And I think in science, when we look at science, it's a world of reductionism. It's a, re it's a world of trying to get to the, the minutiae of what is going on biologically or physiologically. I think one of the fascinating things when I you know, first spoke to you and, and, and sat in the course is this systemic approach of how you look at um, you know, connective tissue and modifying movement, right? And I think, you know, that really resonated with me because there's a time to be a reductionist, but there's also a global holistic system of interaction that is just the human organism. So that, that you know, that, that resonates with me. And then the other part of it is what my, you know, what my PhD was actually on, um, was looking at repeat exposure to force. So we did a pretty aggressive um, squat protocol and we exposed athletes to it again and again and again to look at what the sympathetic response was. So to look at um, epinephrine and norepinephrine, like adrenaline, noradrenaline, mm -hmm. um, and how that then signaled testosterone release, the anabolic cascade that comes from epinephrine release and then creating an anabolic environment that then promotes uh, attachment of the, you know, the testosterone to the nervous system, and then you can potentiate the neural signal. Okay. So that's kind of what my whole PhD was about. And what we found was the repeat exposure across time actually blunts that response. You become, the, the arousal gets suppressed, you get used to the exposure, the, the terror or the, 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 you know, the, I'm going in to do this six by 10, 80% is like, a, like I know what that feels like now. My arousal prior to that workout actually gets suppressed. So coming back to your point, yes, if you continually expose the body to, a, to, a, to the same exercise, let's say, your body, as it should, that's what the body does, it, it, it adapts to the overload, and now the overload is um, reduced, and, and you're no longer getting the physiological response. And that's the key to training, and the, the strategy of training is that you've got to continually change the stimulus. You've got to continually trick the body or make the body guess, so then it responds. And I think, you know, like I say, two key points. Let's not always look in a reductionist fashion. Mm -hmm. And from my, my work in my PhD, understanding that the body adapts pretty quickly. So within two to three workouts um, of a very strenuous um, session, we saw the biokinetics of a, a significant, uh, of a group of well-trained individuals completely change to the same stimulus, the same response. So if that's the case, you've got to then chase a new stimulus to re-potentiate the whole process. So you, you were referring to what I would refer to as accommodation, which Absolutely, really, yeah. yeah. Which really means that your body is trying to, you, your body's lazy as shit, right? Your body doesn't want to fucking spend energy it doesn't want to spend. So it's trying to find ways to make whatever you give it easier, right? Yeah. And when people get better at bench press, oh, I got stronger. No, you got easier. You know what I mean? It got easier, but it, it, it's not that, it's not necessarily that you, you accommodate it to the exercise. I say this about swimming, right? It's like swimming's the best cardiovascular exercise when you don't know what the hell you're doing. But as soon as you know how to swim, you're literally learning to accommodate to the water such that you preserve energy. You're trying to be as efficient as possible. That, that's the whole point of swimming. <laughs> yeah. And, and you see how the confusion gets it? Because it's like, well, I have to deadlift. I have to deadlift. I, well, no, you really don't have to deadlift. You have to stress large amounts of tissue. Mm -hmm. um, I would argue specifically for whatever it is what, that you do. And then you have to also try to get these neuroendocrine responses. So you have to care for, it's all the same stuff, but you care for it on both sides. But that's fascinating because for people listening to understand what we're saying is, is I'll call this reaching the hay flick limit, right? So the hay flick limit is like all, all somatic cells have a, a number of times that they can replicate properly, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. And if you continue to run that same line with the same amount of information, you run down that hay flick limit. So that line of tissue is going to yield, right? That's why you have to learn to distribute the load amongst other tissues. 